Welcome back to another Jackrabbit Illustrated podcast brought to you by our title sponsor, the Kubota Dealers of South Dakota. Whether it's tractors, mowers, utility vehicles, construction or farm equipment, Kubota's got you covered. Now with nine locations across the state of South Dakota, there's always a dealer nearby. Visit your local Kubota dealer today. Jackrabbit podcasts are also sponsored by Culver's of Brookings in Watertown, the home of the Butter Burger, Jackrabbit Central, the best place to get your jack gear, and the best sports bar in South Dakota, Cubby Sports Bar and Grill. Without further ado, here is the A-Team. And welcome back to the first Jackrabbit Illustrated uh, show of 2024. Uh, thanks for being here, everyone. Chad, how the heck you doing? Pretty, pretty well, Matt. Um, you know, this old man... We made it till two o'clock last night, and uh, yeah, I know that's that's insane for me. It's been years, but we had some people over. We had a good time. Um, didn't really tie one on myself. I had a few beers and some Chipogna, and I mean, I had to have an old fashioned, obviously. Yeah, you know. So I've I've been dragging a little bit today. Took took about a twenty minute nap here about an hour and a half ago. So <laughs> two thirty. All right, my goodness, buddy. I yeah, think yeah. last year, last time I stayed up till two thirty was last year when we went to Cedar Falls together. And, oh, <laughs> and, and driving back, that was probably the yeah. latest I've stayed up. Oh man, now. my truck rode so rough on that ride back. I don't know why. It was, <laughs> you were trying to tweet. Remember that? You're yeah, like, just shaking. You're it. like, you know, this. I'm like it's, uh, it's so funny. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. How was well, Christmas? Welcome everybody. Good to have you. Uh, Merry Merry Christmas, late and uh, happy Happy New Year. We hope uh, twenty four brings uh, some of the same. That's 23, and that's what we're going to talk about right here with the national championship game. Yeah, yeah. But first, we got to thank our Kubota dealers of South Dakota, uh, title sponsor here of the show, uh, John Colley and crew. Uh, thank you very much for your continued support. Um, you know, we couldn't do this without you. Uh, you know, what did Matt do with his tractor? It still hasn't snowed. So today we had to fire up the tractor and just drive it around the yard uh, just to keep things moving and it's going to be a couple weeks, obviously, with going to Frisco. Uh, so we thought today was a good day to get it out. Um, let Miles drive it again. So uh, it was a lot of fun, easy to use, um, and just a really nice, nice tractor. Looking forward to mowing my yard again now. I'm not going to need to blow snow. So, yeah, thank you, Kubota Dealers of South Dakota. Yes, thank you. And John's an awesome dude, too. Yeah. It's always great to have great partners that are also great human beings, which yeah. all of ours are. And yep. I mean, we've got so many in on the tailgate. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so and with, how late yeah. did you make it last night? Me? Yeah. I stayed up till the end of the game and then went to bed. The Packers Vikings game. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, so like 10. It's a pretty good game. I, yeah. That's the, I watched almost the entire thing. That's the most NFL I've watched in one sitting all year. In fact, it might yeah. be more than I watched cumulatively for the whole yeah. year. And I, I am so happy for Tucker. Yeah. You know, uh, so many times our guys, when they go pro, it takes them a year or two in some cases to kind of get some traction. Um, and Tucker is really making a difference for the Packers. I'm a huge Packers fan. I know you are too. Brendan is. Um, and, and sure, it's too bad that, you know, Luke Musgrave had to get injured for him to get some time, for Tucker to get time. Uh, but man, like talk about making the most of your opportunities. He's just blocking his ass off. He's catching everything. Uh, they're getting to see the run after the catch. Uh, and it's funny because, you know, in the in the pre-draft stuff and um, even at the start of the year, some of the Packer like bloggers and stuff like us um, were all saying, oh, he's just a blocking tight end. He's just a blocking tight end that you have to scheme open. And it's like, no, Tucker can win and Tucker's going to get some yak. So Dude, I'm just see, really happy for him. Just I mean, all of our players that have went to the NFL and, and some of them haven't made it. And it's strictly because they haven't got the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, a guy's what a, a half a, a plus grade better than him maybe in practice but geez get him out there he he's performed much better than the guy he replaced i mean yeah. just look at the yep. statistics he's yep. like the yards per catch he's is mm -hmm. he the top on the packers second hey, he's right up there yeah yeah so. He's, he, so like just get the guy the ball you know yeah. and yeah. he's He's tough to scheme against because he is such a good blocker because mm -hmm. you don't know if that's going to be a blocker or a chip. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, he's got a 15-yard pass play after after he catches the ball. It's 
Jordan Love was looking good. I know this ain't a Packers p- podcast. <laughs> you know I mean? but, no, but our no. other guys in the league, right, though, Chad? Yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah. Dallas is going to the playoffs. He caught a touchdown. Yeah. Um, Christian Roseboom's going to the playoffs. Pierre Strong is going to the playoffs with the Browns. Um, Cade has Chiefs a chance. probably end up in the playoffs. Yeah, Chiefs are going to be in the playoffs. So, I mean, just all of our guys making the playoffs. That's pretty dang cool to see, to see them having success and being part of winning teams. I mean – Based on where he was drafted, Oladokun's a better quarterback than Brock Purdy. So you know, I mean, <laughs> he hasn't even he hasn't even got a chance to show that. Yeah, this right. Is my point. He hasn't even uh, had a chance to show that. He was on the Niners. Purdy, Purdy might be sitting. Who knows? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Imposter statement tournament. There we go. <laughs> oh man, but no, uh, hopefully everyone's enjoying watching Tucker and our guys in the league. So yeah, hopefully this year's draft. We're going to have a whole bunch more guys join them, right, in the league? I hope so, yeah. Sure looks like it. Oh, Don Gardner is with the Bucks. Too. Yeah, Don Gardner. Yep. In there. They clinched. So, yeah, cool. All right. Should we talk about Montana? There's a game coming up, right, next Sunday? We could talk about them. Um, I'm – I'm almost more interested in the pregame activities, to be well, completely okay. honest. So let's so let's talk <laughs> I mean, about that can, quick. We yeah. can go in order of events, or we can start with the game. I don't care. So so today, let's do order of events. So what when are you getting into Frisco? When so that's a little up in the air. Um, we've had some turmoil in that department in the last week. Ah. I canceled my flight. Uh, I was with Southwest, so I got. So I got free, uh, I got all my money back as far as in credits. When I'm going to use them, I don't know, but Sam found out she had $350 in flight credits and already had five, six places for us to go uh, this coming March. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> thinking we'll find somewhere to use that money. Sure. So what, um, are, you, how, what are you doing? How, so, yeah, I was going to get there. Uh, <laughs> so as you know, I'm friends with Tim Habeck. And, and and Dan Dan Beck mm-hmm. comes to our tailgate. You, you've met yeah. these guys. Yeah. Well, they're driving down and they're leaving a little early. Except for they were going to spend the night in like Kansas City or something. I was like, oh, that doesn't really get me there earlier because I'd like to get there early and do the Perry's thing. Yep. With Brendan and them. So Tim's like, yeah, I don't really want to drive through the night, you know, because I'm not going to have a place to stay or sleep mm-hmm. when we get there. Yeah, it makes sense, man. But then, last minute, Dan Haybeck is coming with us, too. So, like, these are my boys, and I the only real opportunity with everything we got going for me to spend some time with them is on the drive there and the drive back. Yep. So, it's like, cancel the flight. Let's do it. You know, let's let's go nice. have a road trip. The buds, you know, maybe we take in a Bucky's at 2 in the morning. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, we're going to drive down there. I guess the Aloft's being pretty cool about – maybe letting us in early so nice. you know we can get in and get three four hours of sleep and get up and do 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 noon uh so we'll when see do you how arrive? that goes what do, what time do you arrive or what day friday uh, morning or early saturday morning? friday morning okay okay or early friday morning we'll be leaving about five o'clock ish from harrisburg um okay. so probably let's say six o'clock woof and yeah and we we had to we had to <laughs> rent a van because you know, we added my fat ass, so um we're gonna have to have some space. There's there's gonna be five of us driving down. It, it should be a good time. You know, I'm okay. I'm looking forward to that too, quite a okay. bit, honestly. This is guys cool. that uh, guys that always used to come to tailgate and they got families now and they don't they ain't able to come to all the tailgates and all the games like they used to. So sure. sure. Yep. So that's that's my plan on getting down there and getting back will be its own thing because it looks like there maybe will be a system moving in about Monday. Yeah, I saw that. Um yeah, so not looking forward to that, but yeah, uh, right, we'll see. Yeah, so Kelsey and I are flying down Friday, landing around 1.30, um, flying from MSP to to DF Dub. So, yeah, I think we're going to go to the stockyards right away and just check that out, and then probably karaoke that night, I'm thinking. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah the stockyards are pretty cool. It's uh, it's fairly t- touristy, but they're, it's cool to watch and, or be there. I was there for the, like the... One time I went was like way before Frisco happened, but we watched them bring the the, the Longhorns in through the streets and stuff. It was kind of cool. So cool. All right, yeah. So then Saturday, right, our live show at the local. Uh, we will have a full itinerary tomorrow on our Megapod uh, when all of your favorite uh, A and B teamers will be on. Uh, so, so Kyle, that'll be good. 
Um, hey, Cal. And then, uh, and then Saturday. So that's going to run from like one to three. Plus, there's potentially going to be some overtime. Uh, and then the alumni event is from four to six at the star. And then I think the local has all sorts of stuff. You guys had Amanda on from the local. Yep. Uh, they're going to have their own stuff going on too. And I think we'll probably be doing a cornhole tournament. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen the specifics, but it sounded like that'll probably be pretty easy to throw together. So those of you that think your aces get, get your, be able to put your money where your mouth is, so to speak. <laughs> Just Brendan's comment. Brendan's comment. Stockyards. Oh, shoot. Oh, we, we hit it, it at again. the same time. We did Stock, it again. Stockyards. Is that where the Montana fans are getting dropped off? Nice of you to go greet them, Matt. Well, <laughs> the and, welcoming committee. The welcoming. And the ref says go to Billy Bob's. That's a that's a bar down there at the Stockyards. I didn't go when I was there. I okay. That, that's a that's a that's a pretty cool spot. You should probably check it out. All right. Sounds good. Hopefully. Hey, Jim's good. got a point. We don't do OT. We do oh. garage time. Brendan, make a note of that in the show notes for tomorrow. Garage time, not OT. Nice. All right. So then Saturday morning, uh, we'll have the full schedule out for this. Same spot as last year, uh, around 9 o'clock, 9 to 1230, or however long you want to stay. Uh, there'll be the video screen there that they talked about a couple weeks ago or a couple episodes ago. So that should be good. Um, what Are else? We're gonna Jack? be able to play techno ball on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but as long as we're talking about tailgate, we do have to thank our sponsors, our business sponsors, right? We have right. Hubby's Sports Bar and Grill, Kubota Dealers of South Dakota, two of our our long term or you know our two of our regular sponsors stepped up again for this tailgate to do. Boyce Law Firm, who was a sponsor last year. Yep. Holdsworth Farms, Blue Tide Car Wash, DeBoer Construction. They were all sponsors last year as well. Uh, so grateful for them uh, stepping up to, to make this event possible. Uh, the, Kel the Sheldon family, um, Becky and Dustin, uh, Bloomin' Raider Farms, Josiah's Coffee, Mench Greenhouse. Those three were all sponsors last year as well. Uh, Creekside Meats and Dakota Butcher are each donating pulled pork to this effort to help us you know, with food. Um, Jan Bussey Ford out of Highmore, Mike Schaefer's college football prospects. Um, Mike, uh, you know, his, his, his son Peyton played last year on the team. Uh, Mike's doing great work in the college recruiting world, uh, helping yep. prospects get linked up with colleges. Uh, SNL painting, Brendan's neighbors down there in Renner, uh, Bowen and Associates. And we talked about Dakota Butcher, uh, Lang, accounting and uh, CFO services, uh, President Barry Dunn, his family, the Dunn family, King Egg, Hub City Farms of Vermilion, Northwestern Mutual, who's also sponsoring uh, the, the Alex's Lemonade Stand deal with FCS Radio, and then Brookings Family Dentistry. So those are our sponsors for this. Uh, again, very, very grateful for helping them or helping us make this possible. Uh, really appreciate you all. And this tailgate that we're going to talk about tomorrow night uh, is just going to be awesome. So I'm really looking forward to it, folks. Ben Ben has been spearheading that effort for the tailgate. He's doing a great job. And uh, Brendan's been working on the, the live event at the local. So thank you guys for your work. You guys are killing it. Can't wait to I share can. it with everyone tomorrow. And that's all of our partners for the. That's uh, all. That's all of our business partners. Yeah. Okay. And then we have right now we're looking at seventy four. Uh, I think we got seventy four. Right? Is that what it is? <clears throat> what documents say that seventy four individuals. Right. So, thank you to the individuals. Seventy four. Yep. And and I think, I think we 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 got. Oh man, you guys wait till tomorrow. We got the details tomorrow. It's. I'm so excited. It's, 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 I don't know how Ben did it, but he's making it better than last year. That's all I can say. Yeah. Dude, dude's a rock star. Uh, maybe he should do that instead of engineering. I don't know. He's pretty good at it. Yeah. Right. All He's right. Party, party engineer. Is that a thing? Yeah. I mean, he could be. I mean, he's, it is now. He's our party <laughs> engineer. Right. There you go. Seth Meyer asks, are you listing off every business in South Dakota? Uh, potentially, right? The good, the, the good ones. The good ones, yeah. I mean, um, if they all want to give us 500 bucks, we'll be doing pretty hot. 
Yeah. So, <laughs> right. So Jordan, uh, let's talk about the alumni event at the star. Uh, Jordan Fink says, really hope the event at the star is better than last year's debacle. So you guys were at the star in the spring season, right? Were you guys yeah. there? Yeah, I went to it. It was Can great. Can you guys talk about it a little bit? Like is, there's tons of space, right? Yeah. It's like, uh, I don't know, 60 yards of, of AstroTurf, basically mm-hmm. not quite as wide as a full football field out in front of the, uh, out in front of the Dallas's, uh, practice i think that's our practice arena yeah it's right? yeah they're you know, whatever forty yeah, thousand seat practice arena it's it's a super cool setup uh i was there in the spring honestly i came super late so i don't know if there are any issues or not but i i don't know i just i love the location and all that but yeah i was what was the deal last year they oversold a bunch of stuff and it just was a disaster it's too yeah small. it was a Venue oversold what they could handle. Oh From man, it's, like, so. it's not a small, not a small space. So no parking. You, you want to get there early and get to parking because getting in and out of there is a little bit of a. I don't know. It was easy for us because we showed up late last time, but when everybody left, it was a little bit of a mess. There is a parking ramp to like the east that you can walk over from. That's that's what I'd probably do. Uh, we parked the limo there because we had the limo, and figured, figured, <laughs> that's figured right. Think it's someone important, so we just parked the limo there, and they did, we didn't even pay. We just parked on the the ground floor and walked in. Yeah. So sometimes if you act like you own the place, you know nobody will question you. So. And, and this this pep rally, right, is a ticketed event, so you're gonna have to pay to get event. in. I think it's twenty dollars, right. and there's no food or drink included in it, but there are concessions that you can buy. So they're on. That's on your own. Um, so the twenty dollars just gets you in the door essentially to the event. So yeah, and I want to say the spring session was like all those uh, prep rallies that we've had uh, for the uh, Summit League tournament, where it's mm-hmm. you know they have some food, it's free will donation. They had beer available for sure that you could buy, and I think we ran them out of beer sure. at the star too. Um, but yeah, and this yeah. The, the alumni has nothing to do with the food or drink. No, this is this is just a, the what they're selling is the ticket into the event, and it uh, there's concessions available from everything that I've read. So, yeah, I yeah. think I'll be hanging out and trying to get some garage time in on the podcast. We we got we got some notaries going to be around, so we can do yeah. some chit chatting, and then I don't have to pay for two Ubers. So, mm-hmm. yep. All right, and we've been corrected. It's actually in the Ford Center, which is connected to this complex. The, the oh, Star it's inside. Complex. Yep. So, okay. Thanks, Chris, for pointing that up. Thank you. Yeah, that that would explain the 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 ticketing then. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, all right. Um, are we ready to talk about the game, Dallas? How the heck you doing? I was buddy? gonna say hi, hi guys. Yeah, you just jumped right in. So. Yeah, sorry, sorry I tried putting you on right as you put yourself on. So on. A- yeah, that happens. I, I appreciate the hospitality. No, I snuck in the side door. I'm good. I've had uh, I've had a day. I actually I was gonna. I brought uh, a la uh, Fritzy. I had a. I actually have a Pounder Bush Light, and I was going to shotgun it to start, but my car keys are in the car, and I don't think I have anything to do that. So I was actually going to enter shotgunning a beer here. Oh, uh, thank you, Dallas, for pointing that out. One last sponsor, folks, that I missed on my list: Beal Distributing out of Sioux thank Falls. You. Oh, there um, we go. I it, so it, did that on purpose. I, is donating I, I, I beer, did. So, yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Jed. So we'll have the details on the beer uh, tomorrow for our tailgating event. But thanks, oh. thank you, Beal Distributing. Didn't mean to leave you off there. Thanks. I didn't know if you were waiting to to no. do that with no. tomorrow's stuff. So my that's bad. Why I didn't actually say anything. Otherwise, I'm my like, bad. <laughs> spit it out so the game yeah we're playing some team who wears maroon like the worst color ever right that was my high school color yeah but what kid have you ever asked a kid like hey what's your favorite color and have him respond maroon no no <laughs> never what it's just a bad color <laughs> It's not a good color. It's not terrible. I mean, it's better than purple. We can all now I feel that. like I'm in the middle. I don't know what to say. I, I could go either way on that. You are kind of in the middle. <laughs> Look, at this. Dark. Look at that. It's Seth Meyer, it's dark pink. Our state Ooh, like in footballs. Maroon and white right there. Dark yeah. pink. I, I like that. Yeah, let's go with dark pink. <laughs> dark pink. Oh, my goodness. All right. So 
we I put out this morning the uh, Know Your Foe Montana preview, right? Um, I didn't want to do it because there's been so much written and spoken about this game already that if, if you don't know about Montana, my article probably didn't, you know, or if you've read any of it, I don't know if I did any good. What, what struck me, though, on this is all three of their running backs average 5.1 yards per carry. That was weird to me. But they've yeah, given up awesome. 36 sacks. Like, I, I couldn't that, – that's hard to comprehend a team can make it this far um, by, by giving up 36 sacks. I don't know. Any, any thoughts on their offensive line? Have you guys any – anything? Well, they run those weird splits like you had pointed out, right? Yep. And they do a good job with it other than it – the thing that I saw in watching the NDSU and Furman games is it does lead to if you're not – playing your lane quite like you should your position if you start doing crosses and stuff like twists on the line it can lead you into a situation where the holes aren't just holes that they made it you know it's it's that much bigger hmm. say they're you know you twist on both sides and they run up the center well then there might be a big hole there and so your linebackers are gonna have to play pretty sound at that spot that point yeah I agree. The, the the sack number is surprising, and I I couldn't put my finger on it either. And I'm I'm not going to act like I've watched, you know, seven of their games or anything, but I've watched a decent amount of of, of Grizz football this year, and they're I think their their O line is is quite athletic. Um, obviously got some good size to them, so I, I couldn't put my finger again on it either of what what caused that. Um, Chad, I I do think you're right. I watched drawn a blank what the last game I saw was, but yeah, I saw they were able to to wash uh, the defensive line and get some real wide gaps opened up, um, taking advantage of that. So I think you got to be careful. No, I, I do believe Chan Gang's going to eat here, um, you know, against them and, and get home. And uh, I really think our D-line versus the quarterback is one of the more interesting matchups we got because you've got this guy that you've seen him progress as the year has gone on and he's a very good quarterback mm -hmm. extremely athletic he's solid but it's it's watching you know he's what their second leading rusher is mm -hmm. that right okay mm -hmm. second leading rusher when he gets vertical and he can hit a seam dude can go but mm -hmm. you've also seen him make a ton of mistakes when he gets bottled up and has to move laterally a bit and gets gets flustered so it's going to be an odd mix of okay you you have to keep him bottled up you got to keep him contained and you need to when he flushes it's and i've talked about this before this one's going to be all about hey you know what just mirror him at the line of scrimmage don't let him get north and south make him make a mistake trust you got someone behind you it's going to make a play right so that that to me is going to be a a huge key to this game and once we get into it and i'm sorry i walked in obviously late so i don't know what we've talked about yet but if there's anything yeah anything montana while you've talked about it's to me it's like that first quarter is going to tell the story of the game because that's where emotions are going to be run high that's when that's when it's going to be a much more equal contest and if there's something, if they, you know, uh, can, if they can cause a turnover, if they can get after Mark and maybe make him make a mistake, if they can make a couple big plays, stretch downfield, right? If if they can can pop off a kick, you know, a punt return or something, any of those things happen, that'll completely change the game. But if we can keep the first quarter honestly boring as hell, mm -hmm. then the Jacks are going to roll. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chad, I didn't even thought of that, so I'm glad you brought that up about the stunting and the looping. Um, I mean, that's something we love to do. So yeah, we do like to do that. Um, so that was something that jumped off the page for me. Yeah, that's interesting. And Dallas, you bring up a, a good point there. You know, if we can shut it down early, you know, Chad and I were talking before the show, and you haven't missed anything. We haven't talked about Montana at all, besides what you've heard. We, oh, we were talking tailgate and how we're getting there, fun New Year's activities. Uh, Pat, nice. Jack Roberts and then I fell. So, um, so my score prediction, we'll get into it later, but I predicted like a 31 10 game, something like that. And I think it's going to be lower scoring like that just because of, of what you said. Um, just the how, how we're going to want to play it and how their defense is built. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just but it's it's odd because typically you always say, like, don't don't play to not make mistakes like that's usually the worst way to play a game but i actually think going in 
that needs to be the mantra just a little bit of like, hey, don't let anything get squirrely. Keep the quarter again, don't let the quarterback do what he can do athletically. Make him make a mistake. Do I went on this rant earlier. Do not punt to number five. My God, I want someone either cut or fired if we do that. <laughs> What did you hear Jimmy's press conference? It's, I heard and I get it. And this isn't like, oh, we, I don't believe our guys can tackle. Yes, we have guys that can tackle. I think we have the best special teams in the FCS. It's still a math equation. There is still no reason to do it. <laughs> I am I'm gonna... I'm old and I'm old and stodgy. Don't do it. You think they're gonna punt to Tucker Large? Because statistically he's better. I other, other than I he hope doesn't they do. have he has two less <laughs> touchdowns. I'm not I mean, here to give Montana points. advice. He, he's you know he's four four yards per per return average better and yep. something that you know Rev was trying to point out but I and I'm glad he brought it up yep. but I think it like got missed and so I mean Tucker's dangerous right yeah yeah oh extremely he's God he's fun to watch yeah he is. so Jordan Fink kind of echoes what we're saying here I do not see Montana's offense scoring more than 14 to 17 points against our defense Bergen is electric but I just don't see anything else that is really concerning. Am I seeing things through blue glasses? No, I think you're right. And I had to laugh because in one of the groups, I think it must be the FCS Fans Nation group, you know, there was a Montana fan doing a write-up, and they said, basically, if we score 31 points, we're going to win. And my my thought to that was, we haven't given up 31 points in two seasons, right? I, I just, <laughs> yeah, well, we haven't given yeah, up we will. points in the playoffs, you know? So. Yep. So yeah, if you score 31 points, like that's anyone's ball game, but I don't, I don't see us giving up that many points at all. That was, I don't know. That comment was crazy to me. But, yeah. Um, that, that is a little odd. I think yeah. there's some keys to the game. We touched on them. I've got these things written down, you know, McDowell, if you can make him make decisions, so get him off his first read, second read, whatever. So he's got to make some decisions. So pressure, right? That's what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. Get some pressure on McDowell. And then that cannot translate into a broken play that he turns into long yards. Yep. And, and I think that's one of the biggest keys for our defense. Um, they're going to have some success in, in the run because Gilman's the who we think was going to get the Walter Payton, right? I mean, that hasn't been announced officially yet. Who has? The SPN guy said, yeah. oh, has it? Okay. Yeah, that Walter so Payton gets announced early. That one gets announced early. Okay. So – He's 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 really shifty. The guy's really good. He's gonna get some yards. They also have that Otsmo or Ostmo. Yep. And he runs like a freight train. Dude's big. <laughs> he's not fast, but he's gonna run some people over. Um yeah. you gotta wrap that guy up or he's gonna yeah. get loose. Yep. Um Osmo or like you know, Eli Gilman though, like he hasn't had a good playoff. He has less than no, 100 he yards across the three. The playoffs. I think it's like two six that he's averaging, you know, yards per carry here in the playoffs. So he's a kid I love in high school, by the way. Sorry, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that no, that's fine. He's from your area. Yeah. Uh, you know, another thing I think we got to keep an eye on too on uh, when we're on defense is they like to use Bergen kind of like we used Cade with some jet sweeps and some bubble screens or tunnel screens out there on the edge. We had some success versus NDSU. I see them playing us similar to how they played NDSU as far as their, their scheme. Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't they? Because we kind of play a similar game. Um, we're different, but similar, right? And uh, for the offense, I mean, I mean, my notes just say three things, and it's run, 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 right? <laughs> if we can, if we, I'm serious, man. NDSU lost that game. Like I was telling Matt before the, and yes, you've lost that game. They don't have five false starts and a and a delay a game. They win that game. If mm -hmm. it on the first on the first possession, they go down the field and Cam Miller makes it makes two bad throws. One of them's an amazing catch. And, and the, the second one almost was. That's a touchdown. They win the game, right? I mean, NDSU had every opportunity to win that game and flushed it down the toilet. Now, I'm not trying to take away from Montana, but NDSU should have won that game statistically. Um, and they didn't basically because Junior Bergen. So, like you said, maybe just don't kick to that guy. <laughs> yeah. um, and then Mathis gets hurt, like, on the second drive. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I mean, if our guys stay healthy, I feel good about our chances. Knock on wood somewhere. Knock yeah, on no, I got it. I, I got for Micah. Uh, it's right. going to work. I, yeah, no, I'm with you 100%. The, so, 
as much as I want to see us just, it, it's it, it, honestly, I think the biggest part is is my belief, obviously, in our offensive line, in our three running backs. I, I do think that, I mean, what we've seen statistically is people can pick on that secondary, though. So I don't know where Lujan is looking at exploiting that. Because, again, the, the smart way, if we went out and we ran the ball 80 times, we're going to win the game. Like, they just eventually we're going to wear them down, right? They, they could be leading at halftime, but we're going to wind up winning because the, the, you know, the one-yard gains are going to turn into seven in the second half, blah, blah, blah. We've seen this, uh, seen this movie before. Mm-hmm. But again, you look at those three linebackers they have, they got some dudes. They are good. And and you know, offensive line, they've got the one I should have his name, but I wasn't prepared. The 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 D tackle, the stud. Dubner. Dubner. Yeah, Dubner. Dubner. Again, they they I mean they have some good guys there. Their ends and that three man front don't jump off the page at you with their stats, but they do what they're supposed to do. They've got some very technically sound defensive ends, and their job is to hold a gap, is to know what to do in a given defense, and then those three studs make a shitload of tackles. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to counteract that. So I I don't know that just run at it head first is maybe the best approach with them. I don't know. Until they stack the box, I guess, is what I really mean by that. And then when they stack the box, send some guys on verticals, and they give up the underneath. It, it's what it looked like. I mean, I'm no football genius, but that's what I saw. Yeah. You know, so let's talk. Let's keep talking offense. So uh, talking offense here, this section is going to be sponsored by Culver's. Culver's. In Watertown. So if you are headed from you know the Brookings area, the Watertown area, uh, the best decision I made the last time I went was grabbing Culver's before leaving town. Uh, it's just delicious. It's a great way to you know start your trip, start your road trip. Um, you know that that double butter burger, uh, Dallas. You, if you want to throw in that chicken sandwich, you sure can. Yep, chicken uh, sandwich yeah, instead of fries. Sub it whatever out. it is. So, um, thank you, Culver's, for your support the last couple of years. Really appreciate time out, it. Time out. Time out. So you get a <laughs> butter burger, and instead of fries, you get a chicken sandwich. Yes. You're an, I, you're an amazing I get another, yeah, I don't. I usually That's skip small. fries and get a second sandwich. That's very wise, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I Culver's. I, you know, when I looked at this, too, you know, they their linebacker core is really, really good, uh, in my opinion. Agreed. Um, you know, it looks like they rotate five guys through. Um, the, the, the middle linebacker um, kind of stays on the field, um, but then they have these other guys that just kind of rotate through like we do. And it's definitely the strength of the defense, in, in my opinion. Um, Gubner gets, you know, obviously a lot of the headlines, Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, Braxton Hill's the linebacker name that I'm Braxton looking Hill, at. Yeah, so yeah. Um, that's the guy that stays on the field. Uh, a lot of the rest just kind of rotate through. Um, so I don't know. I'm with you, Dallas. Like, those guys were fun to watch. They can run. Yeah. Man, they can run. Yep. Um, and, you know, a little undersized, but – they it's like deer, it's so. an interesting defense because they, they they let that D tackle get horizontal a little bit and just make plays. You've mm-hmm. got the two DNs that just kind of set edges and try to bottle stuff up. And then, yeah, the it's not even like hash to hash, number to number. It's outside the numbers with those backers. I mean, they, they got to move. Mm-hmm. It, you know, I think Seth Meyer said it earlier. Uh, this defense does remind me of Southern Illinois, what they hmm. run. Interesting. Um, and so I'm I'm a little bit curious about that what did we learn from earlier this season um because Southern illinois did a good job of of, of slowing us down they did and, and they were really they similarly built huge nose guard um and then smaller, i think it's just because they have more guns. talented skills position guys in southern illinois oh, gosh chad <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, stone their secondary is better you're right their secondary is better so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh gosh. I mean, they're basically an fbs team right Oh gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. No, and I can't wait to have you on stage, Mister. <laughs> yeah. We are going to pie him in the face. Yep. <laughs> so, so this is, you know, in my opinion, the only way the Grizz stay in the game is to stay error free, i.e., no turnovers, and get some turnovers on the Jacks. I think that's probably true. I mean, these gap games, right? We always got to be a little bit concerned about rust with such a long layoff on both sides. It didn't. We didn't show it last year at all. We haven't shown it after buys recently. We've been actually been really good after out of bye weeks where we three four years ago used to not be. I I don't know what Dallas. What what are you thinking? How could we? How could Montana win this game? Back to okay. So get 
Paul's comment, get some turnovers from the Jacks. It's again, to me, we have to just the the first probably two possessions, ball protection, ball control, slow it down to start. They're going to come out and just want to put the throttle down and make a statement and try to jump out and get get the emotional lead, even if they're not in the lead on points. And and again, that's done by what they they bring people from all over the place. They have those great linebackers. I would do that by just dialing up the most ridiculous blitzes that I have and hope that Mark, <clears throat> Mark, who doesn't make mistakes, get him to make some sort of a mistake, get somebody coming from behind that he doesn't see, pop the ball out, you know, get, get, you know, bring somebody, drop, drop a DN in a, in a zone, into a zone coverage that maybe he doesn't see, do something like that, cause a freak turnover. Then that changes the complexion of the game early on. So that to me is 100% what they have to do. They need to probably get a turnover and they need five uh, to get a long punt return or something like that. Like those are the two things. If they do those in the first quarter, then we're in for a dogfight. But if we can just slow it down, play, and I uh, play old, honestly, I feel gross every time I bring this up, but it's, it's that old school crusher soul uh, North Dakota State Cal football. Like that is probably the recipe in the first half uh, that is the safest for South Dakota State to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a lot of questions about what they're wearing. I'd be yeah, shocked think- if they didn't wear their white helmets. Yeah, I'd be didn't shocked. we hear? Didn't we hear like through the grapevine <clears throat> that the white helmets are undefeated and we're gonna wear them until they lose? Yeah, I th- I'm, it's a white, outside blue, of the white. other. Blackout so, deal. so yes, the one thing though, one <laughs> last year. So we're on the last year we're on the visitor sideline, but we did we go white, blue, white last year? Did we have a blue jersey? I don't remember. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I mean that would make the most sense. I'd assume they'd want to do that, but just to throw some pointless controversy in, which is probably fake. I did see <laughs> that one that practice picture where we had the two different blue helmets on in practice and we only have blue we only have the single blue shell so to me there's a one percent chance that we were in the process of changing out the blue helmets to wear blues you know putting either and i don't remember what we wore last if we had the white or the uh the, you know the, the the white head or the yellow jackrabbit the last time we wore the blues hmm. i think hmm. we had the all whites i think all whites yeah okay so at any rate to me there's a chance there's a chance maybe they were in the process of swapping those out for the game, but yeah, I assume we're going uh, white, blue, white. Same. Yeah, we're either it's white, blue, white, or white, blue, blue. That's my guess. Yeah, Chad, thanks for putting this comment up on the screen from Taylor Murray on on X on Twitter. Uh, do you think we are being too confident? Yes. I, I, I like this Fa- feels fan, so weird. fans or team. Yeah, I don't think the team's going to be overconfident. Ta- Taylor, all so. right, Taylor, Taylor, the teammate of mine. Taylor, are you talking fans or team? Because I'm assuming the the team is not, because of how just ridiculously, um, um, yeah, again, I keep using the term professional, whatever. It, it just how how absolutely dialed in they are, how confident they are. I I don't think that Jimmy will allow it for a second. But as fans, I guess. But I mean, this is a call it a generational team. My God, they're good, and it's it's been hard, right? Like we we've been called out this year by our Taylor says fans. I don't know. Like, I don't want to turn into overconfident, obnoxious fan base, but these guys are ridiculous. Just enjoy it. Yeah. This is, I mean, my God, they're good. I was just reading something today about not knowing you're in the good old days until they're over. (laughs) Just realize we're in them. They're not over. Tell tell a friend at the game, tell the person to the right and the left, these are the good old days. This is unbelievable. These guys are crazy good. Yeah. And it's, you know, Zimmer and Gaskins had it on their podcast last week where they just talked about how elite this team is. And again, on the on the SDSU Fans Nation page, uh, I saw some people comment like, I wasn't going to go, but Zim's podcast like convinced me like <laughs> I, I need to go to Frisco just to see this team one oh, last this time is, and be a part of it. So it's so special. And I mean, you can't say. I mean, I'm, hopefully in, in the offseason we'll get to have these arguments of like, oh, is it the best? Well, no, it's not the best ever. Frickin' Randy Moss and Chad Pennington were on a frickin' 1AA team. So, no, we are not the best ever. Yep. Um, but top four? I don't know. Like, I'd have to go back and do some research. In terms of just domination, you want to look at yards and points and just what we've done. It's up there. Yeah, it is. Just yeah. got to gotta finish now. Yeah. 
<laughs> Jim, Jim Poppin. Let's pull that up. That is his comment here. So I think honestly, this should be a drinking game. Like every time when Gaskin starts, when, whenever he does <laughs> the, Huskers. like, the, the Huskers, you have to finish your beer, like oh or whatever you're drinking when you're oh listening no. to it. Like, and he might mention it in the first minute, and you have to chug a whole beer, or he might save it for you know the last five minutes. You just never know. But he is gonna sneak Huskers talk into there at some point. So, yeah, I mean <laughs> the Husker fans love them, but. It's time to be SDSU fans. Switch your red to blue. You can you can have both teams. That's fine. I mean, you ain't got a lot to cheer for most days for the Huskers anyway. So, yeah. Nash Hutmacher. That's it. Cheer yeah. for that dude. Yep. Speaking they, of that, did you see that uh, they had a guy that's uh, Kapai from yeah. uh, Washington's going to be transferring potentially somewhere? Yeah, um, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, I have put lots of uh, uh, non, uh, I don't know what to call it, that, a bunch of, ra- <laughs> I, dude, I love, I love my non scary bunny rabbit uh, uh, gifts. It, it just, it fits. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, you guys ready for predictions? I guess. Ooh. Can I go okay. last? Sure. All right. I'll start with offense then and take Isaiah. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> for game ball all right isaiah playoff zay one last time one last time all right it's i i mean it, i want to pick an offensive lineman i mean watching watching mason watching garrett right off into the sunset knowing the unbelievable things that those guys are going to do after what they've done for south dakota state and and again you, you know you hear of all We've got all the great skill players we've had. You've got Mark, who is is you know the the best to ever play quarterback at South Dakota State. You've got you know you've got Isaiah. You've 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 got you know Amar and Angel behind him. You've got the bat the receivers are amazing tight ends. On and on and on. Our offensive line is what has built this team and got us to this point. And they have been led by those two men who are going to be playing on Sundays next year. And you know, people don't sit and just watch, you know, unless you're you're a former offensive lineman or you know them. You don't just sit and watch offensive line play necessarily. But um, I just I hope that everybody respects and appreciates what what Mason, what Garrett, you know, Gus Bus again, on and on, all, all five of them, what they have brought uh, when they've been here. Right. Um, so I think I just I want to give an a, a appreciative nod to them and just say the 605 hogs all right well said i won't say anything about choosing the line uh the entire line <laughs> oh because, my God. because you're not wrong I yeah mean, i just it, it, again one in the trenches and those yeah. guys are some of the best to ever do it here and all of them they are and they, they brought us everybody. to where we're at and, and you yeah. go go back Go back he talks about. four four years, and there's every year, you know, when we would come in, we'd be talking about like, oh no, what about this spot in the O line and that spot, and we're concerned about our depth in the O line, and uh, I tell you what, it has not been an issue, and my God, they're good, mm-hmm. and they, I'd put them up against the O line of probably a hit, you know, quite a few Power Five teams. I mean, they're these guys are great, so yeah. go go get it, go take care of this, they can win this game. There we go. And as much as I love your take, and I do, I think I think that's <laughs> what you're doing. So go ahead. Right? With all due respect, <laughs> I'm not going to shit on it. That's not what I'm doing. Man. That's fine. I just they deserve it. All right, they do. And, and Dustin Helton brings up, you know, calls on the Craftsman Tool Chest. Now, come on, they're better than a budget line tool chest. They're at least a Husky U.S. General or Snap On, bud. Come on, they're better than. Hold on, you put Husky over Craftsman? Really? These days, yeah. Anyway, hmm. um, Craftsman's about the same. Any, <laughs> anywho, I think the person that gets the attention but not he gets he gets respect, sure. But I think we need to stop and realize how how good Mark is. Everybody's always oh, yeah. a manager. No, he's more than that. He makes oh, yeah. excellent decisions. That's that's I mean that's the game management part of it. But he can literally take over a game and throw for three hundred. We've seen it, like, yeah. and and he can run with his legs. He's, 
I don't know. He's he's just so underrated in my in my opinion, and we need to you know just appreciate what we've had in Mark. You know, if he stays healthy, we probably we probably have four rings. You know, if we win this game, right? You know, I don't know. He's he's yep. a stud, and that's who I'm going to pick for that reason. But yes, he can't get his job done unless the guys up front are the studs that they are. And same with Zay. So I mean. It takes yeah, and, a village to raise a child. It takes an O-line to win a game. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. I want that on a shirt. <laughs> that's, that put put, that, put shirt. that on my tombstone. That, that's <laughs> Dude, that's brilliant. I say stupid uh, stuff all the time. We, all right. We got a comment here. Three possible NFL O-linemen on the Jacks. Yes. 100%. Yeah. All mm-hmm. three. The three that I mentioned will play meaningful Sunday snaps. Hmm. Cool. How about... How about I'm thinking that I mean I think Berenson will get a camp invite at least too. I think so. Yep. Yeah. I think they're yeah, I, I think they all all have a shot, to be honest with you. Yeah. When you across, I mean and it just depends too. Like you get to a point, I don't I don't know um any of them personally. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously we we know what, what Garrett, what Mason are planning on doing. Gus has got another year, you know, the some people just are ready to be done. There, you know, there's we just saw the the announcement of the USFL XFL merger into probably probably a stronger league, less teams, but there's still opportunities for guys to continue to play, develop, do all that stuff. So, yep. No, I 100 uh, any of them if they want to continue to play when they're done in Brookings, they can. There we go. Yep. All right, Chad, um, defensive player. I, you want to do that? Before I do that, uh, Daryl England make a good comment. Jack Rabbit Central said they'll be there. They commented on the F- the SDSU Fan Nation on their locations, but for sure at the Pep Rally. And since they're one of our sponsors, I'd like to shout out Jack Rabbit Central, the best place to get all your gear for the game. Um, last year, they, they were so awesome. If you ordered ahead of time, you could call in and have it delivered to Frisco and pick up your gear there. So my guess is if you're cool enough to call in and do that, they would be cool enough to bring it straight to you. And it's something that I'm going to look at because my dad doesn't have really any SDSU gear. And I think he's going to be season ticket holder going forward. So it's awesome. Um, yeah, it's awesome. I'm They'll also stoked. be at the local on Friday afternoon. So oh, they will be. So yep. we have that yep. for sure. Okay. Yep. So there you go. So, um, yeah. so for defense, whew, I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Dyshawn. Okay. You know, I'm gonna give it to Dyshawn. Awesome. I, I don't need to have a reason other than Dyshawn. Okay. You don't. Well, and I, honestly, I'm gonna pick. I, I'm going to assume. I'm telepathically assuming your reasons. You know, you pick a senior. You want to see people going on top. I'm going with Quentin Hicks. I want to see him ball out. Uh, I feel like he's another one. Not quite. Uh, you know, Reese Winkleman status in terms of been around forever. But obviously, we've we've said his name for you know five years now. He's made some great plays. He's given a ton to the school, to the team. I'm going to Quentin. Let's go, okay. Q. Okay. Ah, uh, Seth Meyer. We've been on the same wavelength tonight, Seth. I am taking Isaiah Stalbert as well. Yep. So I just think this. How is a lucky big are we to have Isaiah Stalbert? Very. Like, let's just have some appreciation for that dude that hits like a Mack truck and has for years now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, sorry. The athleticism just to, to to carry tight ends down the field. Um, you know, he goes out and and plays in the slot at times too. So, just a a great player. Um, thank you, Nebraska, for not giving him a scholarship. Right, like that's yep. <laughs> Yep. Thank you. Th- thank you. And Isaiah, I'm glad you uh, became a jackrabbit. Yeah, hundred so. percent. He is a, I'm not a, I'm not a golfer. What, what's an all purpose, real solid golf club. You guys clearly don't golf either. I don't know. Like the, to no, me, that was the I analogy. I was trying to, all. okay, it's, dude, I set you up and you don't golf. It's like you're hybrid. It's, it's like a hybrid. Exactly. It's a hybrid. He's, to me, hybrid. he is Isaiah. He is the hybrid club yeah. of, of, uh, you know, linebacker slash nickel slash, you know, safety type players. Like he can just put them out there. You could probably line them up at defensive end if you need to <laughs> a couple of plays. Like he just, it. yeah, yeah. Dude is a football player. He can do what needs to be done. Um, I saw, let's see names. Oh my God. The names are coming fast and furious. Kate Trevere, younger guy, Jason Freeman. We are also very uh, privileged to have been able to watch him play. Oh, yeah. Huge Jason Freeman fan. Yep. Tucker Large. 
Oh, I, yeah. I see yeah, three people say seven irons. There we go. That's yep. what I meant. I don't golf. <clears throat> hey, it rubs, rubs with me. A Darryl trusty Adams hybrid. Says five wood. Hybrid. All right. <laughs> five wood. <laughs> I feel like that's a. I feel like that's not serious because I, I don't know enough about golf, but I feel like that. That's funny. That's not serious. Kim Hicks says hybrid. We'll we'll trust her more. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> so I have heard this narrative, Seth, that the that the chain gang is not very good, and also that our secondary is not very good. That it's just weird. It's so weird. I, I don't. I don't get where these come from. So well, if if we can make the, the 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 highlight video or the hype reel, we could say they're not good now. Do we want to yeah. just get real serious and say one of us just pick a position? Be like our defensive line is terrible. They're they're such yeah. a weakness. They're not gonna. They won't get it done. They're not gonna get home to the quarterback. They're they're gonna give up contain. Uh, I just I don't believe in them at all. Yeah. He's too athletic. For them. <laughs> He's a, that that, that the quarterback is too athletic. Yes. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Adam Bach. We right did now. get through. All right, see, so yeah, we get another comment there. We get through that whole thing and somehow didn't mention Adam Bach, who is coming back next year. Yeah. Oh my uh, God, that's awesome! What a stud. Um, Dallas, you get to Yo. go first now on the score prediction. Oh no! So this is back to that conversation about not wanting to be too confident. I just, I am. I feel extremely confident. In this team, in this game, most honestly, um, I typically, oh, I see Gabe Trevere as a name pop up there, by the way. Somebody else said that. Mm -hmm. um, so I have privately said 35 to 7, which is an absolute ass kicking. I'm going to say it publicly now 35 to 7. I, I just, I think. They and and this is I don't even it's so weird to to give a blowout in a championship game and be like oh it's not disrespectful to them this team's that good I really think we're that good and I think they've got the time to prepare they didn't again may, maybe this is just common but again you look at they talk about they didn't even prep for Montana for two weeks they did improvement week they worked on them they've stayed focused. Jimmy, again, if you want to talk narratives, Jimmy's career, his playing career was finished in that 09 game. And uh, I tell you what, Jimmy is someone that in life I don't want to piss off. Um, <laughs> if you've ever yep. met him, if you've ever heard him talk, that is not someone I want to piss off. He will have them ready. We will be prepared 35 to 7. All right. Chad? Well, Dallas, you ever watch that, that show that movie called the other guys do you know that um one? i have seen it well if you know they go into the they go into that guy's office and they play good cop bad cop right except yep. for they do bad cop worse cop <laughs> and so <laughs> god that's a good show i'm gonna go 42 10 Oof, Oof. oh man all right all right. We have officially made their hype reel. Yep. And that's Matt fine. hasn't even gone yet. <laughs> well, uh, everyone knows that's read the, the prediction. <laughs> that's Thir true. Thirty-one ten. So is my All prediction. Right. Um, uh, you know what? Let me let me let me reel that back just a bit. I'll give them fourteen because, or you know, they're. I think they're going to get some points, right? Let's let's give them some respect. Give them some points. Forty-two twenty-one. I'll, I'll reprise it. We're going to get forty-two points. 42-21. All right. I've made the edit. All right. It's final now. All right. All right. So first, Chad, you want to pull up Alex's lemonade stand, and I'll talk about Cubbies. Hey, give me a hot um, second. Yeah, I'll talk about Cubbies. So you got some time yeah. here. So, <laughs> Steve Anderson, where's your Prius, Chad? That was You said the other guys. That was the first thing I thought of was Toyota Prius. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, for the, uh, thanks for the Prius. That's what he says, right? That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's a great movie. Um, Cubbies, uh, thank you for sponsoring uh, all year. Um, your Frisco shirts are great. Love them. They're packed, ready to go. And then you also this week have a Frisco burger, which is the special of the week, and it looks delicious. So if you have a chance to get into Cubbies for, for lunch, dinner, whatever it may be, um, make sure you order that Frisco burger or the Italian nachos. Um, which they're still donating $2 to every purchase to one of our SDSU guys um, for the Alex's Lemonade stand. Um, Cubbies, if you guys are listening, uh, make sure you get your donation in or your payment in if you can before 
uh, Saturday because I believe that's when things are final. Um, Saturday or Sunday. I thought it was going to be Saturday with our show. I thought uh, it was too. And I see Bow- Bauman came up here just in the last hour, even. Ooh, yeah. so all he's right. up to five thousand one dollars. Yeah. On, so if on some real recent pledges here, are they Let's pledges? Got. Yeah, they've been. No, I mean donations. Sorry. Okay. So but now if, that he's hit the five thousand dollar mark, isn't that where they kick in the thousand dollars? So that means he's got six grand. Mm, yeah. So he's right behind there, Brian. There seems so. like a sketchy backroom deal where they're trying to get Aiden Bauman to win this somewhere. Know, okay. Somewhere. I'm so not I know saying you, maybe they're fans. <laughs> so it's fine. So I I know we were talking Cubbies here. Which thank you Cubbies. Uh, if anyone wants to help fix this with Alex's lemonade stand, what do we need to do to help? Because I, I I mean we were clearly in the lead with Brian Williams. How do how do we how do we make sure that this doesn't get any closer? So there's so the just... lemon top challenge that you can do, and I don't know how they're allocating that. I think they're going to split it three ways for us and go one. I mean, I, I don't know how they're going to allocate that to our guys. Um, you can go to Cubby's. You can get Italian nachos. As far as I know, they're still doing that. $2 for every Italian nachos they sell. Um, you can go here to this website and and donate directly. Um, how, do, how do I find the website? So it's FCS Nation Radio. Um It'd be this website right here, mm-hmm. fcsnationradio.com uh, slash Alex's Lemonade Stand, or just go to fcsnationradio.com, and then it's up in the upper right-hand corner there. Oh, shoot. Right. You can't see that. I'm sorry. I shared I shared a specific screen, not my Oh, gotcha. Not my actually, browser. Dude, that, actually, that's the way to go. Uh, Matt, can you, if you want to on, on the JI, uh, do you want to share the link, and then we can all share it again? Yeah. Re- yep. Retweet and yep. cool. Um, so it's going to be fun. So the, the, and it sounds like stone, stone brought this up on the FCS nation radio, um, with Brendan, but they are bringing a lot of these guys down to Frisco as well. And they are going to be at the local as well. No way. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be very interesting. Um, I don't know why you would bring Aiden Bauman into the Jackrabbit bar. Poor guy. Um, maybe Todd will be there too, wearing blue. So we'll mm. see. <laughs> I have some um, things to say that I won't. Uh, if he don't. <laughs> if he is in there supporting treat to fight well. childhood treat cancer, well. trade him well. Damn it! Yeah, yeah. And my look, five say, congrats on a great season, and respectfully go Jax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's the whole line right from uh, Pinky Binders, like no fucking fighting, right? So yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Um, has a good time when everybody's cool. Yeah, let's pull this up quick. We have someone new here, Gail Jordan. How do we figure out where the SDS fans will be in the parking lot? We live near Dallas and have lots of folks coming up from South Dakota. Where is the fun happening? Uh, so you may not join us tomorrow for tomorrow's show when we go over all this, but um, we are going to be in the east southeast corner of the stadium. There is a big grass field there. Um, that is where we will be setting up. JFPA will be over there somewhere. Um, and I'm guessing a lot of the other SDSU, uh, tailgaters will be on that East side as well. So, um, what you all are welcome. So we're doing a live show tomorrow night, eight o'clock again, where we go over a lot of the details for, uh, the local and also our tailgating event on Sunday. So did I miss anything there guys? I uh, no, I, I just pulling it up here for you. Um, I'll zoom in here a little bit, but, uh, we're going to be just south of this uh, little parking P dot here that's in the center of your screen. Um, I'll zoom in here. We're going to be just south here. There's there's a grassy area that you can't. Well, here, let me switch over to. Let me switch over to. It is not a knoll. It here. is very flat. There's, yeah, there's no grassy knoll. It's nope. not a grassy knoll. It is a yeah. flat. It's not a knoll. Oh, but God, we would horrible. be right next. That's a fenced in area, and we'd be right next to that fenced in area there. So in that general region in the center of that parking lot. So, oh. uh, all right. Why? Why Guys, would you we... have something against calling it a grassy knoll? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's in Dallas, dude. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it's not downtown though. That's true. We've made it, guys. It is now the week of the national title game. Um, we've made it through these long, this long stretch since we beat the crud out of Albany. 
uh, I, this is going to be great. I'm so excited to get down to um, get down to Frisco again, and for all this fun we have planned. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. Anything else from you guys? No, I don't think. Sorry, I am just completely thrown off by the comment you threw up. That is so cool. Yeah, very cool. Brian Q interned yeah, for Northwest Mutual. Q starts full time in February. Man, that's real life, <laughs> real life creeping up in a hurry. Uh, Says the guy yeah. trying to stab a sixteen ounce bush light with a pencil. Right Are you going to do that right now? I, I want to. Oh. I'm trying. I mean, I can have my wife bring me a twelve ounce, and we could do it together. You gonna do it together? Yeah, let me look, go grab Fritz, look what you did. Oh, I know. Fritz doesn't watch because he doesn't listen to podcasts. <laughs> the guy that caused this doesn't even watch the show. Yep. Um, otherwise, what else can I tell you guys while we're waiting on these? these yeah, shows I'm not sure. Here? Well, yeah, let's see. I, I don't know. Again, super. I was happy to be able to join. I was really concerned that I wasn't going to make it. Uh, yeah, this is, God, what an exciting week. Uh, sorry to everyone you know, everybody's going to be in the same boat here trying to like deal with work yeah. and be functional, right? For a few more days. But uh, I mean, it, it'll come, it'll be there. Also, you know, one thing that tomorrow we'll talk about too is it's exciting all of the different alumni events popping up mm -hmm. and thing, you know, watch parties and things like that. So I want to make sure we talk on that too. Oh, <laughs> did you just bite oh, it? I, <laughs> what in the world just happened? Hey. Uh, Ben, clip that. Clip that. No, no. <laughs> Thank you. It, it was going to happen because this is a warm beer. I don't I don't have any cold. My wife had to give me the last cold one. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Chad, you still like the sausage this week? I love the sausage. Yeah. <laughs> I just got <laughs> blind. My God. Dallas, you got some on your camera, screen, I think. Man. I just got, yeah, I know. I just got destroyed by this can. <laughs> All right, hold on. You got some, see? And I, you hear you're making fun of me for it. We're going to watch <laughs> Dallas bleed out we're, on live. We're over, uh, we are over giddy here yeah. for before the game. I don't know how bad we're, we're going to be after the game. definitely garage time at this point, I think. Beyond right. garage time, everyone's putting up with us. Our numbers haven't gone down. We're still everybody's watching. We've All right, I got, so I got So hold on. You got a 12 ounce. I got a, I got a pounder. I got a 16. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'll do it. That's okay. So I got a race. That's all right. It's, it's called handicapping. We're good. Hold on. Here. Dang. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I am. Good. It right. smells so like malt and hops in here. Yeah, it smells like bush light. So you guys did it. Do you want me? You, are we yeah, gonna you give us a countdown. Then? All right. Do it. You're going to have a countdown? Hello. What are we doing? Okay. Are we doing? Countdown? Three, three, two, one. Go big. Go blue. Go jacks. <laughs> no, Jax, I had extra four ounces. 